Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Corner Talks podcast. I have my friend here, talented musician and actress, Jazzy Leeds. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, pleasure to have you back on the podcast. It's been a short while. Yeah. Um, but it's always, you know, always looking forward to having a conversation with you. Yeah, I feel like we're always ready to dive in. So <laughs> we're always That's ready good. to dive in. Yeah. And, and you know, we always have conversations even before the podcast. Uh, and I feel like we're on the same wavelength, uh, just mm-hmm. how we perceive the world, uh, how we, you know, ha- are pursuing our craft, right? Uh, whether yeah. it be music or film. Uh, so it's, it's really cool to, to see, to meet someone that you see eye to eye with, um, yeah. and, and you share that same experience. Yep. It helps you feel that sense of community. Yes, exactly. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, Jazze and I were like talking about, uh, the importance of having that comforting feeling of, you know, th- this is a very arduous path, uh, very challenging, uh, as creatives. Uh, so we're always, you know, skeptical. We're always doubting. We don't know, uh, what's to come. And, mm-hmm. you know, like you said, a sense of community, it's always reassuring to know that because you feel oftentimes, uh, and we'll get into it with mental illness, that you're alone, right? You're trapped mm-hmm. and you're the only one out of 7 billion people, you're the only one going through it. It's just a weird thing the mind plays on you. Um, yeah. But to know that there's someone like yourself, you know, who has similar experiences um, or maybe methods and how she uh, kind of overcame that uh, anxiety or depression uh, is really inspiring. Thank you. Yeah, it's definitely a long journey. Um, yeah, for sure. But yeah. I think like taking that first step or, or allowing creating that uh, sense of safe space, like I was saying earlier, is the first step to allowing people to talk about it and come out with their stories and breaking down the stigma as a whole, right? Exactly. Yeah, and and it's it's mm-hmm. so important. And you know, I was telling you uh, before the podcast how. You know, young men, especially um, people in my age group, you know, they don't really, it's stigmatized. You can't really talk about your feelings or you can't really express really what's on your mind and speak your mind. And something that I've been told, uh, whether I take it as a compliment or insult, is I'm very direct, I'm very open. Um, and I always have been. Whether I try to conceal myself or not, people just kind of know what's going on. Um, yeah. And obviously that can hurt you like with anything, right? Nothing's uh, perfect. Yeah. But uh, I'd rather be that way because I've made so many great friendships um, through my transparency, right. Mm -hmm. By showing them, I'm like that humiliation. Like I'm just as human as you. The last thing I want is for people to think, you know, I'm perfect and nothing's wrong with me. And I think that harkens back to right. Storytelling is that makes for a boring movie. You know, you want to, you want to feel like you're, you're a character that's going through some challenges, but at the end you have an arc and you're, you're learning through life as you go. I hate that pressure that like, you feel like you need to be perfect. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Or people, even like on social media, people think because you, like because you're on social media or like your face is on social media, you're not allowed to feel any other emotions. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And if you step outside of that, you say something else, they're like, oh, well, um, like, oh, that's going to hurt her brand or like that's going to whatever. Yeah, yeah. it's, um, yeah, it, it's, it's unusual. Like I remember hearing, I don't know, I saw a snippet on Instagram, uh, just Billie Eilish saying like, don't say everything about your life or don't expose everything about your life. Yeah. And I, but I've also seen celebrities that show every side of their life, yeah. you know, and, and it's worked for, it worked for them. And obviously you have to do what makes you feel comfortable, right? Yeah. Everybody's but like level of vulnerability is going to be different. A hundred percent. Like yeah. just thinking in my head, right. Um, because I'm thinking of like Canadian artists and, you know, the billboard mm-hmm. awards that happened recently. Yeah. And, you know, you got a Justin Bieber's account. That's all his posts are like about family and what he does and his anxiety and God and religion and just mm-hmm. really puts it out all, all out on the table. I feel like I just know him. Like I'm, I, I know everything about his life, even though I obviously don't. Yeah. And then you have someone like Drake, right. A very talented, uh, you know, prominent artist, <laughs> and his stuff is more aesthetic, right? It's yeah. more appealing to the eye, um, but it also suits the tone of a hip hop artist. Uh, nothing mm-hmm. wrong with that, but again, it just doesn't have the same. Like, it's not like he's posting uh, motivational messages or like he does it in, a, in in a different sort of way, like through his music. You know, yeah. it's never like it's, flat out. Yeah, I feel like he um, every like piece of work or art that he puts out, there's because of everything that he's accomplished. There's always that level of um, motivation behind like inspiring other people about what he does and every step that he takes and mm-hmm. even though yeah we don't know much about Drake but I feel like we've all kind of watched him 
grow up in the scene and take on different mm-hmm. roles and jump exactly. from actor to artist to artist of the decade like it's crazy yeah it is crazy and yeah. you know a, a big thing a big accomplishment or something that i look to and, and you as well is the fact that he's from toronto um mm-hmm. you know he's from uh, a city where you know, now it's becoming a hub now it's growing but I remember 10 years ago when I was thinking of big dreams of making it, everyone was telling me you got to be in Los Angeles to make it happen. And, yeah. you know, he, he just like proved that uh, obviously there has been talent before that's come from, mm-hmm. come from Canada, but I really respect about him is he uh, just put it on the map in a different way. Like he, he marketed the hell out of that city. Right. Yeah. It's not like he forgot about it. He, it, he worked it into his craft any which way he can. Like yeah. something that comes to mind is views. Uh, you know, the, the album has the CN Tower on it and it's not mm-hmm. a distant shot. It's not like just a little skyline of the Toronto. It's like yeah. full focus. And yeah. if you're, if you're someone that's a kid in like the States, you know, that's inspired by him or, you know, just loves his music. You're saying to you, you, you want to naturally look into it and say, what's he sitting on? What's he, you know, cause he has his little figure. I think he's sitting on the edge of the CN Tower, that, yeah, yeah. that bulb, right? But yeah, um, yeah it, it's a uh, side away. He's never shied away from where he's never forgot where he's from. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, this people are probably wondering how this connects back to mental health. For me, the big thing is, you know, artists of the decade, decade, like you mentioned at the billboard awards, he, um, you know, had a acceptance speech and it was a beautiful video that they, they shot beforehand explaining Mm -hmm. his career and all the accomplishments he's made along the way. But he comes on the stage and he says, I just want you guys to know like that video might've shown bravado and confidence, but I'm very self-conscious of my work and I don't take compliments too kindly or too easily, Mm -hmm. I should say. And when he said that it it, it hit me because how many artists or how many people we come across entrepreneurs, businessmen, whatever, Yeah. where it's like, you got to believe it. You can't, you like, like there's no excuse. There's no room for weakness or, 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 or doubt or insecurity. Right. Yeah. And here's a man that like, he's made it and and he's right. He's the kind of guy where you see his page and it's like, you know, just look at me. It's very flashy, very stylized. Mm-hmm. And the fact that he had the confidence to just tell you like live on stage, you know, by the yeah. way, like I'm very self-conscious. I believe yeah. that, you know, some people will say like, I was just saying that now to be humble. It's like, no, nah. yeah. it's like he does. He obviously is proud of where he is. Right. Of but course, it's also yeah. part of the, it's part of the genre. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you, Eminem said it like you have to, uh, constantly be insulting each other, constantly be challenging each other, um, yeah. wanting, wanting up each other. It's just part of the, the, uh, the energy, right? Like the spirit yeah. of, of, of the craft. But I think like I said, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, sorry. I was just gonna say, I'm like, yeah, I think it's like beautiful that he said that. Um, because a lot of people of his status won't want to say that they won't want to take yeah. on that role of being like, Oh yeah, I'm self-conscious. Like they want to be overly confident or you would think yes. like, their ego is completely blown up, but exactly. I love that he has this, like, he still carries this humble energy with him. He knows yeah. what his worth is, but he's still humble. Exactly. And again, like how much more respect do you have seeing mm-hmm. that? Right. Do you know? Cause yeah. as I see it all the time, uh, especially rappers, uh, yeah. you know, six plus and things like that. Mm-hmm. And again, they're all, everyone's trying to make it at the end of the day. You can't judge anyone. Yeah. But uh, I think it's just so important um, to have that transparency, to have that humiliation, because uh, you never know who's watching. You never know who's inspired by you. Yeah. Um, and that's something I've learned, actually, recently. Like, well, I've always kind of knew it, that I was inspiring some people around me. Mm-hmm. But you, you take a moment, especially when you're down and out, and you say, I'm touching a lot of lives I don't even realize, because people yeah. will message me. And it's like, they're, they're dependent on me in the sense of if, I, if, if I'm not if I don't continue to create content, right? If mm-hmm. I don't continue to pursue my craft, they kind of maybe lose that hope. And I've had those very humbling interactions where people tell me, uh, you know, one guy, one friend I knew where it's like, I'm only pursuing my career because of you. Like, because you, you believe in it so much. Yeah. Because I think yeah. I'm so energetic and like anything can happen, right? Like the most mm-hmm. optimistic when I talk about my yeah. passion. Meanwhile, when I'm home, I'm just like, what, how am I going to make it work? <laughs> but uh, I was so optimistic about yeah. it that he once said, he's like, honestly, if it wasn't for you, I don't know if I'd still be like in this, right? I don't know if he's still in the, yeah. in the industry, but what I'm trying to say yeah. is at the time, yeah, it, it was uh, it was a very touching moment. And, and I, I look back to those things where it's like, hey, you know, mm-hmm. you're not, you're not, you might not be speaking to millions at the, at right now, but the, the few that are around, right? Uh, yeah. they, they count on you those are those are your true fans and those are the ones you should be looking at 
It's right? true. It's true. It's very true. And I know like, um, it's, just, I didn't know how much of an impact I was making until people started reaching out. Yeah. And, um, I never, like, I never shared, like recently I started sharing a little bit about what people were saying to me, but I never shared mm. it before, but I was like, you know what, this is the kind of energy I want to put out there. And I want people to, it, I, I'm, the reason I'm sharing is because it's, I'm trying to normalize the fact of, yeah, you should reach out. If you feel a way about somebody like in a positive way, like tell them how you feel, let them know how you feel, appreciate them, celebrate them. And cause I think in our generation, a lot of the times people will watch, but they don't want to say anything or clap for yeah, you or whatever. Yeah. But like, for me, it's important to create that energy. So when people like, that's just what I'm about. It's celebrating people and celebrating each other. So, yeah. And I, and I've seen yeah. that on, on your Instagram recently, right? You, you have some conversations that people like DMS that you've been receiving mm -hmm. uh, on Instagram, which uh, was very nice to see. Um, and you've been uh, back to what you were saying about celebrating others uh you've been very nice to me uh very kind uh, towards my work oh, <laughs> no yeah you have and and uh, you know that you think we think the same way where it's like yeah. just people don't realize like how far that uh you know appreciation goes you know just yeah. saying like great work or you know way to go right and i'm like yeah. oh thanks for supporting and you're like always you're like always supporting in other words like don't even think yeah. twice about it right of course um, yeah because it is very rare, right? Like, like yeah. you just said, there are people that they just observe, um, yeah. especially where I'm from, like who I grew up with. Mm -hmm. And the most random of times, this is what I mean by you never know who's watching. Yeah. You'll get a message and say, by the way, like your content's really inspiring me or it's, it's at, at the very least entertaining, even though I have no idea what's happening, right? Uh, some of the subjects I talk about. Um, yeah. But what I'm saying is like, there's no likes, there's no comments, right? Yeah. Uh, there's no DMs. But once in a while, you'll get that and say, hey, they might yeah. they don't need to do that right see the yeah. computer doesn't the algorithm uh doesn't know who's really receiving that information mm -hmm. um only you'll know as a human right because like just because they don't like it or, or comment doesn't mean uh it, it's not making an impact right exactly right? Yeah. yeah so i th that's why i'm glad we had this conversation because i want to lead into like mental health um mm -hmm. and that's what i was trying to get at is it's so important that we have that transparency, right? And and this is why I was telling you before the podcast, I created this podcast is mm -hmm. my long-term vision. Um, I don't know if I said it before, but I'll say it again is, you yeah. know, to, to show people that if and when I do make it, uh, mm -hmm. someone that is my age or younger or trying to figure out their life, maybe feeling behind can look at these podcasts and say he was in the same position at this time or yeah. he was doing this. And again, I don't know, we, we all live different lives. You can't compare. But mm -hmm. just to know, just that recognition that, you know, you're not alone. Like we said earlier in this podcast, yeah. you know, you're not alone. That's so important. And that's something that mm -hmm. I, I can't stress enough um, because when we reach our dark places, uh, we feel like we're the only ones going through it. Right? I know it's the way the brain works. It just like makes you feel so isolated and you're just like, so isolated. Yeah. Yeah. And um, this is again why we have these conversations and why you know i'm always happy to have someone like you on the podcast is mm -hmm. it, it, it reminds you right that hey there's someone on the other side that's that's going through something just as similar and you know yeah. everyone has their ups and downs and not not everything is perfect especially what you see on social media right yeah so i wanted to re i remember on the last podcast uh i had you on uh you were saying uh before you kind of pursued the arts full force you were yeah. uh diving into mental health and you yeah. kind of announced you were a mental health advocate um, yeah. and you still are right you still practice mm -hmm. it and you used it now in a, in a way that's creative uh, with your with your posts right through your music yeah. through your um performances and things like that so i thought that was really unique mm -hmm. um what was the reason for taking on this role as a mental health advocate? Um, so I guess for me, the biggest reason was the fact that the carrying that feeling, like I'm always going to remember how alone I felt in whatever I was going through. Right. Um, and carrying that feeling of being like, you feel so alone to the point where you feel like you can't even talk about it publicly. You can't even address anything because of, because you're so scared of the stigma that's out there you're, you're you're so scared to the point that you feel like society's going to reject you and you don't even want to be here to like see another day you know I've, yeah i've gotten to that point where i felt like that i didn't know i'm not the only one that's probably felt that 
like that dark no, of, yeah. in a dark of a place so carrying that feeling I guess I was like you know I've had like one day not one day but over a time period it just was like you know what like I I just want to live authentically and being a human being and that's who I am and that's the purpose I want to like walk in that's a part of my bigger purpose of creating content or creating art um but I want that to be central to who I am in terms of like just living out loud and not being ashamed for being a human being that's experiencing real things, you know? Yeah, for sure. And that, you that's don't, how it started. Yeah, you want to you want to have permission to be human, essentially, um, mm. be, because that, that's what human beings are. Uh, they're they're meant to suffer as uh, yeah. very morbid as it may sound uh it's the reality right like we there's not one person on earth that has never suffered um everyone suffers differently everyone handles it differently but we all suffer Mm -hmm. and uh, obviously there's more severe situations than others but uh, there's no way of avoiding it um and i think i think that's exactly speaks to exactly what you were saying about you know you you feel like um just like so hopeless um one thing I i remember reading in a book i think it was called everything is effed uh, mm-hmm. Mark Manson, he said something like, uh, sadness is not the, is, is not the opposite of ha- happiness. So, um, the opposite of happiness is hopelessness. And mm-hmm. that hit me really hard because I know what that means. It's like, obviously we, you know, you and I or anyone listening has been sad, but hopelessness mm-hmm. is a different level. Hopelessness yes. where it's like, you can't even think of something positive to look mm-hmm. forward to. That's, that's to me, the scariest thing. Yeah. And you can't even like picture the future. Yeah. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's how I felt like for me, I can't, I couldn't picture the future. I couldn't even picture like the next few days or the next week. It was just like, it was like, oh, you would picture it, but it, you would picture it just being the way you were already at. Like there was yeah. no hope. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you said it beautifully because um, that's what it is. Like I was thinking the other day, like when I, when I go through my own moments is it's very scary because you can't even visualize. Usually you're always, especially if you're in a positive state of mind, you're always visualizing tomorrow. It's just mm-hmm. who we are, right? We have the capability of imagining tomorrow or next year, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. But when you're in that dark place of hopelessness, for sure, yeah, you, you can't even visualize uh, the next hour. Like it's just, you, you, you become so present, uh, but in the wrong way, mm-hmm. right? Like there's like a cloud that, that's, oh, that's over you. Uh, yeah. you, you, it, it, it's a, it's a feeling of paralysis really. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like just yeah. not being able to, 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 to function, like move. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. And people don't understand how debilitating it is unless they go through it themselves. That's yeah. That's what I feel like. Cause I didn't understand how debilitating depression could be until it completely like debilitated me. Yeah. And a big yeah. thing, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of this, um, especially growing up because, you know, you're, you're young and naive and, and I still have moments like this because I'm human, but uh, I think we also tend to judge people and say like, how are you depressed or how are they having anxiety? Like mm-hmm. they look, they're, they're pretty or, you know, they have things figured out or they have a nice job. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like someone I know, like if they're on pills, but it's like, but they're, a good looking person how is that possible like it doesn't mm-hmm. it doesn't connect because again that's how society teaches us it's like if you're rich yeah. beautiful famous you shouldn't have those problems and yeah. as proven uh with the people that we either look up to or the people we follow uh yeah. they they have a lot of issues a lot of a lot of these poor celebrities don't even make it past 30 because of uh it just takes over their life so it's yeah. not always the answers yeah it's not i've had situations where you know i if i I don't even, I think I have like publicly stated that I deal with depression. I mean, I don't think I've clearly stated it, but in conversation, I've stated that I deal with depression. But even that, to get to that point of saying it out loud, I like, I had so much anxiety to be like, do I want to say this publicly? Yeah. Do I? Um, but then I was like, no, like this is when it's feeling scary and it's this fear is kicking in. This is when I know that I need to take this little jump to, make some progress just not 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 like for creating change but for myself and yeah being able to have more conversation what i'm dealing with yeah and it started that's the first step right that that courage to admit you uh, i wouldn't say have a problem but admit that there is Mm -hmm. something going on right um 
yeah. in your mind. There's some, there's clearly something present. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you you can you can feel it, you can take it in, but if you're always in denial, um, you'll know. You, like you have to listen to your body. <laughs> you have to listen to yeah. your emotions. A lot of people like to ignore it, suppress it. Again, very guilty of this myself. Yeah. Um, between society, how I'm raised, you know, just put it aside, put it aside, and it creeps up on you. And I did a, a, a corner talks vlog uh, like recently. Uh, or I, I did one uh, this week. And basically I said, it'll creep up on you in a time where you least expect it or where you don't want it to happen. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, like your emotions come and go, they, they flow in and out of you. And mm-hmm. I've experienced it myself where, you know, a moment from a past event or, you know, something that I put away that gave me anxiety would come back and like, you know, cause I didn't handle it properly. Right. Um, yeah. It, it, it kind of creeps up in a way where it traumatizes you and mm-hmm. um, you know, it just affects like, you know I mean? Like you're going into a new job or, you know, you're, you, maybe you're going out with someone or um, you know, just really anything. It, it, it just, if it's not handled properly, it'll, it'll come back to you and maybe even stronger. So it's very important that you kind of yeah. let it flow in your, like observe it, uh, let it kind of feel it, feel that motion like through you um, understand why it's there right uh, yeah. journal it you need to make space for it and I think yeah. a lot of people don't know how to make space for it and i've seen it like just uh kind of snowball into other things and other people exactly. but then you realize like in those kind of situations like you have to separate yourself and you're like this i can't i can't forcefully help you i can't change you i can bring you into awareness or try but if that person doesn't want to see it then there's not really much we can do sometimes. Yeah, of course. Um, mm-hmm. That's the that's the hardest part, right? Is uh, mm-hmm. unfortunately they say you know you should speak to people about what you're going through, uh, depression and things like that. But the reality is, is only you can get out of it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, obviously there's events and people along the way that can help you. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm saying is, all you have is yourself at the end of the day, right? Yeah. And it's kind of like you have to be willing to help yourself you know, maybe find those ways. It's very challenging, very hard to say, um, you know, Mm -hmm. especially with people that may suffer from severe depression. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I've kind of, you know, experienced as, as much as I had, you know, my family, my friends that were supportive, the only way I was going to get out of that dark place um, is if I just put one foot in front of the other every day. Um, It doesn't always have to be, it doesn't have to be building a house, right? It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, whatever we, our, our professions are, you know, creating a piece of music. It's just simple things like making your bed, all right. Making yourself yeah. breakfast, going for a walk, like mm-hmm. treat yourself, treat yourself, like take care of yourself uh, as if you are someone else. Yeah. It's like everything else goes out the window, like in terms of n- other than the basic necessities, everything goes out the window. Cause you don't feel like doing anything. You don't feel like creating anything or you're exactly, just trying yeah. to survive. So exactly. It's, you're not it's, living. It's yeah. Yeah. One yeah. step on one foot in front of the other day by day yeah i like yeah i like what you said because that's kind of my motto is you know yeah. you should be living not surviving and uh, you know mm-hmm. there's a lot of us i think uh even if they're not going through depression like they're just going through the motions and yeah uh, it, it's a sad way to live uh that's that's something that that's why i love the arts or why i'm pursuing this creative path so much is it makes me feel alive does that mm-hmm. does it do the same thing for yourself yeah i mean when i do it when i do it not considering other people's opinions and yes, I can just yes. do it for me and then exactly, I'm like yeah. okay this is fulfilling I don't care what like how it's going to be perceived but um it's like this is just a process I it's I'm not going to allow it to be valued by numbers and what people say in their opinions exactly this for me and then I think the biggest thing to side note about like our passions is something mm-hmm. I've been experiencing is uh what sucks is like not only you have the opinions, right? Opinions not to don't stress me too much. Uh, they've had, they've had, they come and go, mm-hmm. but it's more like, you know, those expectations or those influences by reality, right? Like, yeah. you know, how long can you do this until it becomes a, a, a career or like you get paid, right? right? Yeah. Um, I'm that's glad something you said that, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's something that I, you know, I'm sure you're no strangers to this, especially if yeah. uh, you were telling me about your parents and, you know, your upbringing, um, you know, I'm Italian and I'm, I'm sure that you have a very similar, uh, you know, no kid, like we don't come from show business families, you know what I mean? Like we don't, we're not, uh, our parents aren't like, 
yeah up there as they say exactly <laughs> they don't understand show business at all and rightfully so right like how scary mm-hmm. it is and to say yeah i want to make it it's like well everyone says that right yeah. but when you're when you're in there right like i was thinking of drake's kid adonis i'm like mm-hmm. that kid right obviously you know we don't know how his life's going to pan out but if he ever has some kind of aspiration towards that field, you know what I mean? It won't, Drake's not going to look at him like, yeah, good luck kid. Right. <laughs> it's more like, yeah, yeah. Let me see if I can call someone. Yeah. <laughs> He's already showing him LeBron James videos. Like he wants to get him into basketball. Right. I so saw it's his like, little uh, video where he was uh, shooting hoops. I was like, wow, yeah, he's yeah. already developing his skills. He's already developing a skill, but trust me, yeah. I know like knowing Drake, right. Cause he has that winner mentality. He he's trying to see what he can do, right. Like push, push him to, to have that mindset. Yeah. And all the power to them, right? Like I, yeah. I really, um, I think that's so healthy. That's so important. Um, you know, get, getting. I don't want to get off to to off a tangent, but yeah, you know, this this concept of you know, we're at that age where we see a lot of people we know getting married, having kids. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a big commitment. That's a big step. Like for me yeah. to have a child, right? I don't want to get too uh, personal here, but for me to have <laughs> a child, the way I look at it is like I want to bring him into a world where it's like I can take care of them. You know, I don't mm-hmm. want to bring him into a world where it's like, I'm trying to still figure out my stuff. Yeah. Cause I don't want to hurt that, that, that child. It's very important that they develop a healthy way. Yeah. It's such a huge step to take as human beings. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I feel like we always feel like we need to be completely ready. And yeah. then I guess the opposite side is sometimes like, we're never going to be completely ready. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's, there's never, there's never going to be a right time. And, and that's what I mean by yeah. like things constantly changing. Um, yeah. It's just, I guess, that, like you look at yourself, your point in time, right? Mm-hmm. And like, you know, your mindset, like I said, is very different than probably a lot of people, you know, because mm-hmm. um, you're, you're thinking about yourself, your career, right? Yeah. Like this, this, this artist journey uh, you're pursuing mm-hmm. and, and then that could eventually change, right? You want to, you want to fi- start a family and things like that. So yeah. it, it's, there's no formula to it, um, no. but it's just, it's just being honest with yourself. Like I said, a big thing for me is. Um, you want to be in a situation where it's like you at least feel comfortable uh, you know be like just you want to have your thing sorted out (laughs) before Mm -hmm. before that taking that step and yeah um, and that stems from everything really it's it's not even about like financially stable it's also your mental health right yeah yeah you want to be as closest to ready as possible (laughs) the closest to ready as possible but yeah. yeah yeah but um yeah, so I, you know, I'm always curious, like, in terms of, because you said you you went through a hard time mm-hmm. um, in the past, and you don't have to go into much detail if you don't feel comfortable, but I am curious, like, what do you think it was that led to that state of mind? Well, um, so if I think about everything, I feel like uh, my heart, I've been through many depressive episodes and uh, the worst one was, like I said, about almost, almost a year and a half ago now. Right. Right. Um, but, but overall I've been dealing with um, depression for about, well, yeah, I've been dealing with depression for about over about six years, actually six years. Okay. Um, and it started, I think it started from my transition to, high school to university when I left Mm. when I left uh, home to move away for school and I started all that and I think I got myself into situations that I wasn't ready for at that young age because I was 17 years old yeah at that time I got myself into situations that I wasn't ready for and so many changes happened and it was just a lot then and I didn't have the tools to be fully equipped for that and I think a lot of us usually don't have the tools yeah and I noticed I was doing I noticed I was like suffering when like my grades were dropping and I didn't like I wasn't able to stay on top of my schoolwork and it was just like I wasn't able to like keep up a routine and um I never really knew it was depression until it started to get worse and snowball and then that's when I kind of like started to seek help or I went in for a doctor's appointment explaining what I was feeling and that's when the doctor was like I think he uh, not I think she's like you what you're describing is MDD major depressive disorder wow and uh and I 
I was like, no, like that's not, that's not yeah. me. Um, but for her to sit down and tell me that, like, and she was like, you know, this is what you're dealing with, everything that you're seeing. Um, and I think you need to get like, we need to talk about more options to get you help. Yeah. And that's when my journey of help really started. But, but at that point, I wasn't ready to completely receive the help. So of course, yeah. I spiraled into letting things get worse and things did get worse. <laughs> things did get like worse throughout from 17 to 24. Wow. Like things had a lot has happened uh, mm -hmm. throughout the, over those years. And uh, I think I really started to make that change for myself is like to, I would say within the last half of my recovery, because that's when I was completely surrendering to getting help and allowing myself to completely fight for myself because yeah. I, I wasn't fighting. I was most likely self-sabotaging in the, in the yeah. beginning. And it's so common. We all do that. We, like, yeah. We don't have the tools. We don't know what we're like better sometimes. Yeah, no, I've been, I, I laugh because I, I been there myself, like where, yeah. you know, I've, I've, I've had my parents be like, stop hitting yourself and, you know, yeah. just, just getting that, uh, that reaction out of them because they're, they're right. Like you can't get to that mm -hmm. point. Obviously, you know, uh, what, what you described, like, I want to know, is it more, was it more of a culture shock, uh, mm -hmm. moving away from home or was the pressures of like graduating or what you were going through at school? Um, for that early on, it was, I would say it was triggered by early on. It was triggered by, I guess, getting into like, yeah, culture shock, um, going away from school, uh, going away from school. Sorry. Um, and then like just other changes to like relationships that I had in my life, different relationships, those major changes. Right. Um, and then kind of going into isolation and, um, throwing myself into other situations that like, yeah, I can't really get into, but like no, throwing no, myself for sure, yeah. into other situations that like, I was not prepared for. And then over the years, it was like, um, also just being in a long-term relationship for so long, like, uh, people don't realize sometimes relationships can have such a big impact on you. Yeah, and for sure. So that as well was a huge factor. And then plus I was going through a lot of grief. I went through a lot of grief and loss. Yeah. And it was just all snowballing. A lot. Snowballing yeah. all at once. And and the pressure of being away from school and paying so much money and not being like thinking that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be able to well, because I was in such a dark place thinking like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to amount to anything. How am I gonna like you know, pay back my parents for all the support that they were giving me. Like, I'm, I'm not even worthy of like, yeah, whatever this outcome is going to be. Yeah, no, uh, I, yeah, I can relate to that actually. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, that state of mind. Yeah. Where, like, when I graduated, um, you know, my whole life, I was told from birth, literally, where if you go to university, it was like Mecca. <laughs> like the golden mm -hmm. opportunity. And if you graduate, you're going to be set, um, you know, not rich, but live a comfortable life, you know, mm -hmm. uh, much better than if you didn't go to school. Yeah. And when I graduated, um, it was probably the biggest wake up call uh, mm -hmm. because I realized, you know, there's obviously opportunities, but they were just not knocking <laughs> on my door. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Like I was, I, I would apply nonstop. I would, you know, try my best to get into certain companies I, I liked. And again, I, I was raised with this mentality that your degree will be the key. Of course. And, yeah. A lot of us are raised with that mentality. Yeah. Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, when I, when I graduated, it was just such a slap in the face. And I remember like just going, you know, I worked odd jobs. I still like managed to find some stuff. Mm -hmm but I reached a point of like isolation. Mm -hmm. um, I was becoming, you know, recruit, like absorbed in my own thoughts of what you were saying, you know, will yeah. I find something important or am I worthy? Yeah. Um, or maybe I'm not cut out for this. Mm -hmm. And now I use it as like a superpower in a way where it's like, you know, maybe I wasn't like as leverage, maybe I wasn't cut out for it because I'm meant, because I'm creative and I'm meant for this path. Mm 
mm-hmm. of filmmaking, like directing. And that's why I started my production company. Yeah. But at the same time now, I also have those thoughts. It doesn't mean everything is smooth uh, mm-hmm. where it's like, am I even cut out for this? Right. Because, you know, it, it's very overwhelming. It's very intimidating. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a very competitive industry. Yeah. Uh, and I, I still believe in myself. You know what I mean? Like I still, you still have that wish in your heart. Mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is like, you, you can't help but be like self-aware, like where you are and where you're yeah. headed. Um, yeah. And when I was like going through school, I was like a lot of the people and friends that I was connected with, they were applying to like linear paths. And yeah. I was in this arts program. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So oh, sure. it was hard um, being around that and then thinking like, like a lot of us don't even know what we're doing when we're in, our, on, in undergrad. We don't know what we really want to do exactly so yeah being surrounded by that um and then me on the other hand struggling to figure out what i'm doing and then like i said i was dealing with not only my demons i was dealing with other people's demons around me and i was it was i was just too young for all of that um and i wasn't aware of what i wasn't aware of the person that i was turning into and right. i didn't like the person that i was turning into yeah so yeah, I really like uh, took a toll on me. Um, but overall, yeah, like I would say my experience is like, I've been dealing with mental health for about six years. If I were to sum it up, I've been dealing with mental health for about six years, dealing with, mm-hmm. I've dealt with major depressive episodes. I've right. had fallouts within the mental health care system within Canada, and that doesn't help because yeah. you deal with trauma over and over again. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing for me was trauma the buildup of trauma that I had over the years which is like still hard for me to talk about no for sure but um yeah the buildup of trauma and then when I you know sometimes I would get good help and good support but then there was times where I had fallouts within the Canadian mental health care system and they weren't understanding you like they weren't understanding your situation or didn't take the time yeah it was situations like that um oftentimes I would get turned away being like oh you're so like you're so pretty you're so this you're so that like yeah you're a beautiful girl you have nothing to worry about you have nothing See, that's about. what I was and that's what I wanted to, that's what I was saying in the beginning mm-hmm. right is mm-hmm. you know not to make you feel uncomfortable but you said it right there is when you first said you were going through a depressive episode you know I saw mm-hmm. you like you're a very pretty girl so mm-hmm. I'm saying to myself wow right because again that's how we're conditioned we say like how is that possible right but you're mm-hmm. human, right? Yeah. And that and that's what they fail to realize is it doesn't matter what's on the front. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like it doesn't it doesn't do anything. I've gotten yeah. gotten that myself, not to flatter myself, but people have told yeah. me like, you look like you're well kept. I don't get it. Like you yeah. you you shouldn't have that problem. Or yeah. they say like you're you're you look a certain way, so you'll be fine. And it's like yeah. just because I look a certain way doesn't mean anything. Like it, it, you have to be the full package. You have to ha- be strong on the inside as much as you are on the outside, right? Mm-hmm. um so that would that i'm saying as i relate to what you just said is that that would annoy me yeah. as well yeah because it's like on one end you're suffering so much and yeah. nobody's willing to nobody's willing to sit down and just be like hey i see you like yeah. i understand i see you and mm-hmm. let's like let's figure out what we can do when yeah. you're because like at that point when you're reaching out for help you're most of the times when people are reaching out for help they're already like thinking if when they're already thinking about suicide sometimes yeah if, if it's to the point of where they're sitting in a doctor's office they're already like having those thoughts we don't yeah. know if they're planning we don't know if they have a plan to execute we don't know so it's like it's very crucial like people that are in the wet mental health care system they're already so vulnerable yeah um and i've seen other people be mistreated as well like um you know i've, I've had scenarios where i've, I've had to like be hospitalized a few times for oh, things wow. that I was going through um and some of those situations were traumatic because yeah. the way things were dealt with or how I was dealt with was not appropriate right um and in those times it was mainly I would say it's not in those times it was the strangers not, I wouldn't say the strangers now but like strangers at the time that mm. were keeping me sane um, keeping me yeah keeping me feeling like not alone in those situations because those situations are very isolating they're very dehumanizing with the way the system handles it here um 
So if I hadn't had their support, I don't know if I would have like completely made it through and out of those situations. No, for sure. And mm -hmm. that support system is so critical. Um, it's such a delicate situation, like you said, a delicate situation, the mind, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, you know, as much as they, we, we speak about making it strong, um, th there's so many uh, different factors, uh, different ways in which you could break. Mm -hmm. And if you're seeking help, uh, like in a situation like yourself, um, it, it's so critical, like you said, that they, uh, you know, consider whatever you're going through, or they at mm -hmm. least take the time and not, yeah. not brush you off, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that speaks to, like you said, that support system. Again, I wasn't there, but I have strong feeling that they were the ones to help you, um, mm -hmm. like ground you, like, so you're able to uh, come out of it, right? Because a lot of people yeah. that are missing that uh, shoulder to like, you know, someone that's, someone to talk to, mm -hmm. you know, just a simple, it doesn't even have to be all about their problems, just someone that's there giving them the attention Yeah, um, is, is very, is very uh, critical. Yeah. Yeah. Like if I could, um, share one scenario that really sticks out to me there's so many sure. but like yeah. there's one scenario yeah 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 um i remember i was dealing with a hospitalization and i had like it was just a not a good scenario and i wasn't being treated right and mm -hmm. um so i left basically i left right. under out of their care because i okay. wasn't really getting the care and right. tag when you're in that situation, you're not supposed to leave. You're supposed to stay there. Um, but I, I figured out a way to leave. So I kind of like was on the run a little bit. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Cause tech, I wasn't supposed to leave. I was going to, I was going to say like, you have to probably leave legally. Like you have to sort of provide some sort of documentation or. Um, like not like they have to clear you to leave. Basically. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like they yeah. have to give you that, uh, that approval. It's not like yeah. something you could just say, no, I'm done. And then you walk out. Yeah. But because right. of the, like the way they were like providing care to everybody during, I don't know that day or whatever. Right. But like, I didn't appreciate the way the doctor was talking to me and dumbing mm -hmm. down my situation or not like dumbing, yeah. not dumbing down, but like she was assuming, mm -hmm. yeah. condescending, assuming. And yeah. uh, I was like, I'm not going to sit here and let you just disrespect me when I'm in such a vulnerable situation. Yeah. I was like, I don't care to get help from you guys. Like, this is just a band-aid solution. Like I'm out, like I I'm leaving. Nice. Um, so I left um, <laughs> and I wasn't supposed to leave. And clearly like that's negligence on their part to let a patient that's already in a vulnerable state to leave. And then they right. didn't know, they didn't notice, but I, my adrenaline was so high that day after, cause yeah. I was, I literally felt because I was like so worried that I was gonna get um, chased down by security or not chased <laughs> yeah, down, yeah, yeah, yeah. or yeah. like pursued. Like, yeah, and yeah. that that's honestly that's what kind of like ended up happening because I was like, okay, how am I? I had to like figure out an escape plan out of this situation. Of so I ran, I ran out of the ho the hospital. Not ran, but like walked out of the hospital, <laughs> um, and I. And I left all my stuff there. I left all my belongings. I just took like my wallet. Um, and I got nearby, got nearby to this like a, a random area, a random neighborhood. I got somebody to just call me a taxi and take me to the go, go station because the city I was in was so far away from home. Um, somebody would call me a taxi. So I got a taxi driver came and then I like your adrenaline so high you already feel so alone and to me i'm thinking i just want to go home like i just yeah. want to be home where's my safe yeah. place so I, uh i'm like having an anxiety attack and being like okay i'm basically like on the run right now um i need to like just get out of this city so i talked to the taxi driver and i'm like this is i needed somebody to talk to I was like hey this is what i'm feeling i was like i just like need somebody to calm me down a little bit um and i'm like can you just like please get me to this go station and uh like i don't want to get too much into my conversation with that person but like they were kind enough to basically drop me off and they did, he didn't he didn't charge me for that situation he dropped wow. me there That's and amazing. uh i was just i was just like so thankful for that um and then i got on the go station and i got then i got off at the next station mm. 
I got off at the next station and um, cause I was like, okay, while I was on, on the bus for a little bit, I was like, okay, let me slow down now because like, like uh, I need to figure out what to do. Like, I don't want things to blow up. Escalate. Yeah. Yeah. And escalate. So I sat, I was there at the go station. I'm waiting and I'm like, okay, maybe I should take the bus back and like yeah. slow down and figure yeah, this yeah. situation out. So once again, my adrenaline is still really high. And then there's this man standing um, not too far away from me at the go- at that go station. And I look over at him and I'm in my like, whatever I went to the hospital in. I'm not dressed like a normal human citizen. <laughs> yeah. So I look at him and I was like, I was like, hey, because I was pacing around and he kept looking at me and I had the anxiety thinking, oh, like he's looking at me because I look like I'm, I look like. Pensive. Not, yeah. Yeah. I'm like fine. you're very, you, you don't look like you're, you belong in this scenario. Like you just, yeah. yeah. You look like you're on the run, right? Like your mind yeah. somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, okay. So then I talked to him. I was like, hey, I'm like, do I look okay to you right now? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, do I look appropriate because I was just so worried about what I was wearing I was like I don't want to draw attention to myself I was like do I look appropriate um and then he's like yeah he's like you look fine he's like what's wrong um and I was like okay I was like you know this is how I'm feeling I was like this is what happened I'm like can you do you mind just sitting with me I'm like I'm having a lot of anxiety right now I think I'm like having an anxiety attack (laughs) um and I was like can you just like sit with me for a little bit please i'm like i just need human presence right now yeah yeah and his energy was so kind that's why i asked him to sit with me right otherwise right. i wouldn't have right right so he sat with me and he and i told him i told him how suicidal i was feeling in that moment and i think because it was a stranger it was so easy easy for me to say it to a stranger rather than somebody who knew me yeah you didn't care who, who that he judged you because you weren't going to see him again kind of thing right you know yeah. and when your adrenaline's like that yeah of like, course you're yeah. just like you'll approach anyone and say hey you <laughs> sit over here right yeah i know i know exactly what you mean yeah yeah like i was just like just i just needed somebody to calm me down and i know i know yeah. what i need like when i was going through that yeah yeah so i start talking about whatever i'm feeling and he starts crying <laughs> he starts crying oh, wow like, like listening to your story yeah he starts crying yeah. after what i'm saying and then i start crying watching him cry and i'm like, like wow you like i think now that my like adrenaline was on the come down because you need yeah. i needed that like safe space and he was giving it to me he's yeah for it. sure well, he's, that tranquility really yeah so then we were both sitting there crying and he's like i don't know him he doesn't know me and he's like he holds my hand and he's like, okay, we're going to breathe together. And then nice. I was like, we, we took a few breaths together. And he's like, um, he's like, you know, I think you should um, go back. Like, I wouldn't want anything to get worse for you. And he like yeah. helped me sort out my situation. And um, I used his phone then to call, call like the hospital and get in touch with them. And then I realized that they were about to put out an Amber alert for me because oh, I had, yeah because yeah. they were trying to like yeah, yeah. like I pin me down and i was like that's okay. how extreme it was like they had to yeah. put it on amber alert yeah because it was like ne- it's gonna it was gonna be negligence on their part at that the right patient. they're they're liable yeah yeah so wow. i was like thank god i did not have an, my face plastered everywhere and have an yeah no i was gonna say i would those those are the notifications we get on our phone right like it would have been yeah. that kind of amber alert wow yeah, yeah. so i was I was like, thank God I, if that happened, I would have been even more mortified. <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah like don't, <laughs> it, it, I laugh because I'm like, they want to, they want to save these patients, right? They want to yeah. prevent them from re- experiencing more trauma. Mm-hmm. So to get them back, they're just amplifying it by putting out an amber alert. Cause I'm thinking to myself, I'm yeah. like, I wouldn't want that. Yeah. Like, cause then people start looking at their phone. Like everyone knows about your situation. Like, I don't know. It's just, yeah. The irony is, is, is interesting to me. Yeah, I hear my parents are thinking, oh, I'm at school. <laughs> and then, like, they get an yeah, like, yeah. So where was know? this all taking place? This was taking place, like, as I was going to ask you, so your parents had no mm-hmm. idea this was happening? No, my parents, so I was, like, very isolated in all my situations that wow. I was going through. Yeah. And nobody did it. I was living a double life. Where were you, where, where were you living? Where, like, where you... 
Sorry, where I were you was, living? I was in Hamilton. I was in Hamilton. Oh, Hamilton. Mm -hmm. The university. What, what uh, college or university were you going to? I was on McMaster. Oh, McMaster. Okay, yeah, very nice yeah. school. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. It's near Hamilton. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah okay. Yeah. So, like everything that I was dealing with there, my parents didn't know. Like, yeah, because so like, they're back here. You're in Toronto now, right? Yeah. 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 So it was just I was living a huge double life. So anyway, wow, anyways, that, that, yeah, no, that, that's, that, yeah. that's an unreal story. I, I didn't know. I'm imagining that this mm -hmm. is happening while you're home, right? Like yeah. this is, but you're dealing with all this on top of school, I should mention. Yeah, this was on wow. top of school. Yeah. Wow. yeah that's a lot of courage. Yeah. Yeah, thankfully that situation, um, I mean, didn't end so well. I still had to go, but I had to go back and um, of course deal with that. But even like the fact of like me going back, like, um they they so they sent the they sent the halton police to come get me and even then it's like i'm approaching them right i'm approaching them and letting them know that i'm i'm safe and i'm calling you and i'm saying come get me right and i want to come back that i'm okay with coming back but i don't want i don't want to speak to that doctor and i don't want to be put under her care yeah. good for you give me somebody else yeah. Um, if I come back, this is what I want. <laughs> These are my conditions. Yeah. yeah because yeah. it's like, because it's something the little, the, even the doctors carry stigma and the ones that work in the mental health care system. Well, back to what we were, right. Back to our, yeah. uh, the, the, the notion, uh, they're mm -hmm. human, right. Everyone's a human being. as much as we yeah. want to think everyone, you know, th th again, there's people that are more superior, like they actually can help you, uh, mm -hmm. you know, their, their mind, like the ca capabilities, I should say. Mm -hmm. But at their core, everyone is a human being um, and they have stigma because they, they have that in them, right? There's that natural judgment, not that they should, but I'm mm -hmm. trying to like rationalize it saying like, why, why would they have that? Right. They're a doctor, but even, yeah. you know, my mother, for instance, right? Like she mm -hmm. had a lot, of, a lot of medical conditions and mm -hmm. going to a doctor, like it got to a point where one of them, like she, she had a list of things she wanted to discuss because it was important mm -hmm. to her. She couldn't sleep at night. Yeah. And she tries to read them to the doctor and says, excuse me, but I can't get through the whole list. Is mm -hmm. this really necessary? And I'm saying like, you can tell that she's distraught. You know, mm -hmm. she has, you're, you're her last resort. Mm -hmm. take, take a bit of the time. Like I get it. You know, there's things to happen. If you were to do that yeah. to every patient, nothing would get done, but mm -hmm. you have to sometimes be a human and feel this, feel the scenario out. Like you did yeah. with that stranger or that stranger mm -hmm. did with you, I should say. Right. Because mm -hmm. he could have been like looked at you and like, even though he had positive energy, he could have looked at you and said, I'm good. Thank you. And he walked yeah. away. Right. Yeah. But he didn't take, he didn't judge you. He took the time to say, okay, mm -hmm. let, let's see what's going on. And he saved yeah. your life in, in a way. Right. Because who knows if you didn't have that moment of interaction, uh, yeah. what would happen. Right. Yeah. You, you know, like you said, it, it, I don't know if it would have been the cost of your life or in the sense of the Amber Alert. Right. It, it would have yeah. caused you even more trauma down the road. So yeah. yeah, that's a beautiful story in a way that he was able to to be there when you needed him yeah. most. Yeah, I'm very thankful for him. Yeah. Um, and then he took he took he did he gave me his number, and he nice. followed up with me, like he followed up with me later that week. He's like, I want to make sure you're safe, and I want to make sure you're okay. Nice. Um, so when I was able to get out of that situation, I was like, I didn't get a chance to contact him back and. Till this day, I'm like, you know, as a, I've been trying to figure out a way to like pin down his number. To get yeah, it. yeah. So you can actually yeah. give him that for, formal, yeah. Like the yeah. right, uh, yeah, the right, the right kind yeah. of uh, thank you, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, so so are you back now? You're back in Toronto, right? Yeah. So yeah, I've been I've been back I've been back for about uh, over nice. two years now. Yeah. Nice. So that's that's important, right? Like you know, you're back uh, where where you matter, right? Where mm -hmm. you're surrounded by loved ones, uh, mm -hmm. like you're explaining. I, I couldn't could only imagine, you know, being separated from home. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a big step at 17. You know, everyone expects you to like know what you you're doing and what you want, but yeah, you don't take the time to realize you're just a kid. We're all just kids, really. Yeah. In our 20s, like my my grandfather is still 95, and I can't even process fathom that much time, like yeah. being alive for that long. Mm -hmm. like if i'm not if i make it to 95 <laughs> we still yeah. know each other and i have a conversation with you i'll be like uh remember when we were like worried about like dreams <laughs> happening at like 26 <laughs> you know what like, so much Let's right like hope yeah. that happens that we make it to 95 and we exactly can have that there you go 
exactly yeah. but do you know what i mean like it's just uh, they look at us like we have your whole life and i can see why they tell me that is yeah if you live that long you, you see you've seen everything yeah yeah for you've sure. seen it all you've been through it all mm -hmm. and we'll have even more stories to share right now. <laughs> yeah no we we will we will and like you said right mm -hmm. we're have more uh, exciting uh, stuff especially with our careers and you know um, yeah. making our dreams come become a reality that's mm -hmm. that's both of our missions um yeah. and I, th I think it's so therapeutic too that you're using now your art right your your mm -hmm. career to to channel that uh that past right because you could have easily yeah. like dwell on it ruminate um mm -hmm. and i know it's very challenging i know you have your moments but uh as do i uh, as an artist mm -hmm. but we use them uh like i said we find a way to channel them through the craft like my writing i put it on all on, on the page you know, or mm -hmm. these podcasts or anything, yeah. the, the artworks, you know, all their, their cartoons and Pokemon, anime, Yu-Gi-Oh, whatever, yeah. uh, that, that place, that five, six hours, I do that drawing or maybe more yeah. listening to a podcast or just drawing, yeah. uh, takes me away, uh, th that no other, no other creative outlet can. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's so important. Yeah. We, we find those things and I think you're, you're, you're taking great care of yourself now, uh, through music. Uh, you Thank seem to have you. a much more positive <laughs> attitude. Yeah. Your, your, yeah. your Instagram, you know, um, yeah. Like, you know, I, we were talking, talking about mm -hmm. the situation before the podcast about COVID fatigue and, you know, how our sleep patterns are off and mm -hmm. yeah, I just, I, I think it's all, all plays into the idea of like, we have a lot on our minds. Um, yeah. and you know, people can say a quick fix, like it's cause you're not working, you're not busy. And, like I get that, but there, there's yeah. there's much more that we're trying to trying to do for ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's very challenging. I've been in situations where I was working like two three jobs at once, mm -hmm. and I know it's not work. I know it's a mental thing. <laughs> I know yeah. it's I know it's there's something deeper. Um, yeah. Like obviously I was more preoccupied, but mm -hmm. I know when that shift ended or when I clocked out or you know just that contract whatever. I just I remember like life went back to normal. It wasn't like you know what I mean? I was completely superb. So I think it's so important yeah. that people don't dismiss it as, as uh, something so black and white. Yeah. Like, ah, I, I just need to do this. It's just need to, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. We're really, we're really trying to, we're out here really trying to work on ourselves. And um, that, that, that's what I mean at the beginning of the conversation is being real, mm -hmm. right? Not in denial yeah. is what works for you? What do you really want to do? Yeah. Right. And, and something like, you right? something like for myself is with this film. Mm hmm. I wanted, uh, the reason why I think I, I went into a dark place a lot of the times is I felt like that guilt of, yeah. are you really trying? Are you really going for it? You know? Um, mm -hmm. And I don't feel that guilt anymore. It's more of a different yeah. thing. And yeah. it's more like, will it come out? Will, will, will nothing's guaranteed? And will, will I be happier? Right? But yeah. I think I learned in life, I think you could agree as well as, excuse me, we're always going to have um something to improve upon and we're always going to have something that we wish to be better is is mm -hmm. that not human nature like i i think i look back on all the events that i've experienced and i'm grateful yeah. for them but i remember at a time when i didn't have that like i didn't mm -hmm. experience that like i remember university like going to university i remember thinking for some reason like oh i'll never probably get in because it's so hard or it's so challenging competitive yeah. and then when i finally got in it was like oh i got in and then when i got in i was thinking about okay i'll never get a job and then i ended up getting it it's like we're always thinking of things we wish could happen and yeah do you, do you experience that no i do i feel like that's where like mindfulness and being present is so mm -hmm. important i try so much harder now where like i'm a completely different person because of everything that i've gone through but yeah. like in those moments i've you know i missed out and robbed myself of so much because i was so worried about the future or the past and I wasn't in the present and enjoying where I was in life at that time completely yeah so yeah, I was being present. To, yeah now yeah, I'm more so aware important. of that where I'm like and like you like you were saying like the guilt of like thinking oh am I doing enough or yeah. is this going to come out is this the project going to happen or whatever and then I I've kind of removed that pressure off myself where I'm like I'm not going to force my creativity to like happen just because it needs yeah. to happen because other people are expecting something right like if you're having a crap day okay? it's like we're having a crap day and we're just gonna like chill yeah. like let let that motion pass and <laughs> right you're not gonna dwell yeah. on it and say why am i having a crap day and i think that's yeah. that's something that i learned yeah 
and sometimes there's so many personal reasons that like people's projects don't happen or don't come out so but that doesn't mean like that negative right yeah that doesn't mean your whole career is over it's just a bad day or a bad project yeah. you know what i mean um yeah i think that's real well said yeah very important for sure power of now uh, one of the books i read very very uh um uh, you know inspiring very insightful uh you know just identifying that uh we we need to focus on today like this moment this conversation right now that we're having and not think about what we're going to do after it <laughs> right yeah yeah anyway so I realized um, we went over yeah, time sorry. No, no, no worries. Yeah, no worries at okay. all. Um, luckily, I was able to some they, they wanted to push it. So um, okay. Yeah. So I till one, um, I just got a text. But what okay. I'm saying is, uh, yeah, we're good for time. Um, I'm mm-hmm. gonna wrap it up, though. Uh, yeah. Because uh, yeah, I have to I have to take care of that matter. But yeah. I just want to say, uh, Jaze, thank you so much for taking the time to discuss your story. Um, it takes you. a lot of courage. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage. Yeah. Um, you know, to be that transparent, uh, a yeah. lot of people might feel judged mm-hmm. and no one's judging you here. Like we're all, we've all gone through, through the whole situations, you know, yeah. I've, even though I've dealt with it, right. It, it's a very different, uh, path, mm-hmm. but we can relate uh, at the very least, you know, like I can yeah. understand where you're coming from. Um, and it's not easy, yeah. but the important thing is that you're, 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 uh, taking the time, uh, to become better. Yeah. And I see that. Uh, Mm -hmm. on your social media page i see that on what you create and i see Mm -hmm. that just having a conversation with you on the podcast like that's the that's a big big step to actually have the 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 relief of just discussing it you know yeah no thank you i mean i've never shared this story publicly so oh wow no worries i feel Um, honored (laughs) yeah i i think like because i'm at such a different place and i'm such a different person now like i'm a little that's why i'm like i was a little bit like like lightheartedly speaking about the story but like I think if I I have to actually fully bring myself back to that moment to fully give that emotion of what I was feeling and maybe one day I will be able to put it into words and share it that way yeah for sure uh and like I said life life's a journey you never know where 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 you're headed uh but if you uh keep your mind on that path right if you keep that your mind focused uh present um you can't help but do something wrong Right. It's not going to be always perfect, but mm-hmm. you know, you just got to keep, uh, you know, sun, sun's going to come up no matter what, as Kevin Hart said in a podcast, <laughs> no yeah. matter how depressed, right. No matter how sad you are, mm-hmm. uh, sun's always going to come up. In other words, the, the universe, the universe cares about you, but yeah. you know what I mean? It doesn't really care about you. It doesn't, you're, you're just a small speck compared to mm-hmm. everything, the bigger picture. Yeah. Uh, and that brings a lot of relief uh, to, to, yeah. to me, you know, like to know that, you know, we want to believe we have control, that we're masters of the universe, but we really were just intelligent creatures on earth. That's yeah. it, right? And we, we can true. only control what we have um, mm-hmm. in the present. Yeah. So um, yeah, having said that, I really thank you again for coming on. Uh, looking forward to having you back on the podcast, discussing more about your journey and any exciting projects you're working on. Yeah, uh, it's always a pleasure. Sure. Uh, Thank yeah. you for having me. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, um, yeah we're going to keep this uh, dialogue going. And uh, yeah, for all those suffering or maybe going through their own time, again, mm-hmm. you're not alone. You're not alone. No. Uh, Jazzy and I, like everyone goes through it. Um, mm-hmm. We come out of it even stronger. Yeah. And um, just because you had your moment doesn't mean you're not going to have a, a better moment in the future. Yeah. Right? yeah. And as long as you authentically stay true to yourself like the right people will gravitate towards you and that's all that matters yeah exactly exactly so thank you again jazzy for your positivity thank you again for everyone listening and we'll talk soon